good morning and welcome to Deep Springs. I'm so glad that you're here. Look at this lovely bunch. Yeah, you're waving back at me. Uh, if you're not here, what you're missing is everybody's still talking and uh, it's time to worship. But, uh, you know, part of worship is fellowship and part of fellowship is worship. So y'all just continue right on. But I do want you to, to notice this. Our, our golden love offering last week was uh, 567 97 And if you're good at math, Kendall, what's that leave? Hurry, 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 hurry. That's right, $432.03. So be in prayer for how you can, uh, can give to that, and we will take up an offering at the end of service, or you can send your money to the church. That is the golden offering have, uh, to go support the missions of the state of Tennessee. But I'm glad you're here. Exodus chapter 14, and if I told you Exodus chapter 14, you Bible knowledge people should know what I'm talking about. If I told you Exodus 14, the, even the casual Bible reader would probably know what the story is about. I'm not going to tell you what the story is about, but you all probably know what the story is about, and I can tell right now some of y'all is already flipping right through. Yes, so go ahead. Flip there. Well, of course, before that, we've got to continue our fellowship. We've got to continue our worship of the living and one true Mighty God, let's open up in a word of prayer. Good morning, God, thank you. Thank you for loving us, and thank you for the blessing that when I got here this morning, Father, thank you for letting me come in about 30 seconds late. Because just like the Israelites, I might have messed it up. But Father, thank you for letting me come in and see the blessing that we got this morning. I pray right now that that blessing continue. And Father, when we leave here, let it be a pleasure. Let us only say it is great to be in your house and in your presence. Thank you for every blessing that you have given us. Thank you for every footstep that you have carried us along the way. And we pray right now that you go ahead and surround our camp. That we may be still and move forward. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand as we worship. And as you can tell, we're not having a piano player today. Green. 
120. We're going to do this without music, Josh. We're going to do this a cappella. I seen uh, Barney Fife on the television or this weekend. It's a cappella, a cappella. We're going to do this a cappella. Victory in Jesus. Everybody knows this. Everybody going to sing real loud. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood atoning then I repented of my sin and won the victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing of his cleansing power revealing how he made the lame to walk again and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus brought man brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. Forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Let's do a timeout minute. Turn out the screens off. Everybody knows this song. We don't need the words up on the screen. Everybody knows this song. No, we don't. Get a, get a book. Get a book. Page 120. We're going to do the last verse. Everybody knows this song. When we start singing it, you'll know it. I heard about a mansion He has built for me in glory And I heard about the streets of gold Beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in Jesus my Savior Forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me and I knew him and all my love is due him. He 
plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Brother Brown. Come on. All right, well, good morning. Everybody good? You know what these are good for? Bumblebees. I know we're getting out of bumblebee season, but these are fun for bumblebees, all right? But it's also a tennis racket. You know, this tennis racket's about $20, but in the hands of one of the best tennis players in the world, it's worth about 6 or $8 million. Anybody know what this is? Not a ping pong ball. Look at it a little closer. What is it? A golf ball. Okay. You know that golf ball is about $3. You know what that golf ball is in the hands of the world's best golfer? Probably close to $100 million in today's... Everybody know what this is, right? Football, yes. That football is, I think it was $19.99. You know what it's worth in the hands of the best NFL quarterback? Probably about $50 million. Something else, isn't it? They got a baseball glove here. This baseball glove is signed by a... Beautifully, the best right fielder that come out of Mascot, Tennessee. Right there it is. There's right there. You know what it's worth? Probably negative two dollars. But in the hands of the world's best right fielder, it's probably worth call it what they're making. Forty five million dollars a year now. I see this right here, and I'm reminded that I, I teach carpentry and I teach building stuff. I, the kids this week, they built a birdhouse. So, two pieces of wood and a, and a few nails in the midst of a carpenter can be a beautiful birdhouse. But I'm reminded that we're not building birdhouses, we're not playing golf, we're not passing a football, we're not swatting at bumblebees, or we're not playing tennis. We're serving a mighty Savior. So as I begin to, to think about our, our, our birdhouse, I'm reminded that somebody built something a long time ago, and he did it with just two pieces of wood, one, two, and he did it with three nails. You know what he built? He didn't build nothing fancy. He just took and he built a cross. In the hands of professional athletes, things we hold are worth a lot of money. But in the hands of Jesus, with just two pieces of wood and three nails, we can achieve salvation. Salvation is given full and free. All we have to do is understand that there is a man named Jesus that loved us so much that he willingly went to the cross paid the life for our sins, paid the price for our sins. And if we put our trust and faith in Him, then we can be rested in a place called heaven. And we can serve Him beautifully. And we can carry on and do exactly what He asked us to do. Isaiah chapter 41, verse number 13 says, For the Lord thy God will uphold thee with my right hand, saying, Fear not, I will help thee. In the midst of troubles, in the midst of storms, don't rely on the celebrity. Rely on Jesus. Most loving, gracious God, I thank you. Thank you for this simple message. Thank you, Father, for three nails and two pieces of wood. How you built a bridge from my heart to heaven. Father, for everybody else, I'm thankful. And Father, I'm even thankful for the ones that will not accept your gift of salvation because you made it available for us all. And I'm glad you did because you might have left me out. But I'm so glad that you took care of my salvation many years ago. Now, Father, remind me to live faithfully for you. For in your hands is the best place to be. For thee ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
we're not going to sing another song, uh, but I, I am going to open it up to anybody that's got a special for us this morning. Uh, we used to do this in this church years and years ago. We used to ask uh, for special songs, uh, and that's what I want to implement again, uh, something uh, that we used to do a long time ago. Uh, anybody got a special song for us? Brother Joe, you going to sing? Uh, 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 uh. I take that as a no. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, would, I do want to remind you that next Sunday night uh, at 6 o'clock will be our singing service. Uh, everybody prepare this week for a song. Where it's just going to be all home folks this week or this time. So everybody come with a song on their heart next Sunday night at 6 o'clock. Brother Brock. Thank you. 
Thank you. That's what I was referring to, the little blessing that I got this morning. So, bless her heart. She said she wasn't going to sing it. She just, I guess she got up there and she got carried away, but I'm glad you got carried away and I'm glad you chose to sing it. Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. Have you figured out what it's about yet? Huh? What did you say? The Red Sea. Well, we're very, very close. The title of my message, if I had one, would be Be Still and Go. Or be still and move would be, I can't even read my own writing, be still and move. Remember the ten plagues that just happened in Egypt. They had just went through the ten plagues. Moses was begging with Pharaoh, let my people go. You remember the old song we probably went singing and dance of let my people go. Pharaoh said no. So all the plagues came. And they got there and finally God told Moses, tell him, the oldest is going to die if they don't put blood over the doorpost. The oldest of his household is going to die. So it had happened. Pharaoh was mad. Pharaoh was concerned. But Pharaoh would not let them leave. Reminds me of a lot of us today. Just do the right thing. Just listen to them. Just listen to Pharaoh. Just bow down to Pharaoh a little bit. I said Wednesday night, had Jesus done just that, his life probably would have ended gloriously because they would have rallied the troops and they would have supported Jesus. But Jesus didn't come to, to cower down. Jesus didn't come to kiss the ring of Pharaoh. Jesus didn't come to kiss the ring of the Sadducees. And guess what? Neither should us. Neither should us. Oh, just roll over and let them have it. No. No. It would have been, matter of fact, God had a plan and purpose for the Egyptians. Look at verse number 4, if you, got, if you got your books open, I'm not going to read it, but he said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. I will harden Pharaoh's heart. Look at where the Egyptians were. Look at where the Israelites were. The ten plagues that came. Pharaoh says, no, not yet. God told Moses, get up and go. Have you ever not wondered, why did God not do that nine plagues ago? Why did God not do that 436 years earlier? We're going to reveal why God did not do that. The Israelites, I, can say, I think I can say this, the Israelites had to suffer so that God could be glorified. Remember, they had encompassed him, and they had, they, 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 Moses said, Okay, God has given permission to leave. Let's get up, and let's go to Canaan. They get up, and they head out. They're heading down the way. They come to the Red Sea. They should have gone around by the Red Sea, but they did not go around the Red Sea. They didn't have time to go around to the Red Sea. If you look at verse number 12 of chapter 14, they are barreling and it comes to the point. And they said to Moses, Leave us alone, Moses. We should have just stayed. It would have been better to be miserable. It would have been better to be slaves than be stuck here in the desert, either about to drown or about to be swallowed up by the Egyptian army. Just leave us alone. Who does that sound like this morning? Who does that sound like this morning? Who does that sound like this morning? Lord, just leave us alone. Oh, oh, nobody would ever say those words. But our actions sure show it, don't we? Let's stand in honor of reading God's Word. Let's see what happened. Let's see what happened as a result of Moses not cowering down and God being glorified. And Moses said unto the people, Fear not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord, which will show to you. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you shall, you shall see them no more forever. And the Lord will fight for you, and the Lord will... Hold your, and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, Wherefore thou criest unto me, speaking to the children of Israel, that they may go forward. 
But lift up thy rod, and stretch it out over the hand of the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go through on dry land in the midst of the sea. And behold, I... And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they will follow them. And I will get their honor and Pharaoh, and upon all the host, upon the chariots, and upon the horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the, I am the Lord. And I have gotten honor from Pharaoh upon the chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of the Lord, and the angel of God, which, was, which went before the camp of the Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of the Israel. And it was a cloud of darkness to them. And He gave light by night to those and, uh, so that they could not come near the other in the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to back up in a strong wind to the east and to the night. And the sea was dry land and the waters were divided. Verse number 22. And the children of Israel went unto the midst of the sea upon dry ground, and the waters were, were and the waters of the wall were on the right hand and on the left hand. Most loving, gracious God, add a reading of your word. Make it alive and well in us today. Hide me behind the cross that do not see me, but that they see a risen Savior. For it's in your son's name that we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. We live in a beautiful East Tennessee. The Tennessee Valley Authority I don't think any of us are old enough to remember when all that started, maybe one or two of us, but, but when they, they started building the, the local dams for the sake of generating electricity, they began to, to back up the waters, and we've all heard the stories, and during the winter months when they drained the lakes down, we can see remnants of what was there, and I remember working near the lake at this last house that I had opportunity to build, and it hadn't rained for a day or two, and the waters had been subsided for several months, so I got my fishing pole, and I got brave, and I walked down to the shoreline. Well, that was a patch of red clay for probably a good hundred feet to get down the shoreline because of the way the bank laid, you know, and it sloped down. So here I go trekking down there. I got my fishing pole in my hand. I got my lure, and I'm ready to go. I get about halfway down there, and I said, whoa, Nelly, whoa. I turned around just in the nick of time. Had I took a few more steps, the well, ground looked dry, but it wasn't dry. Many people say, that the water had already been backed up before the Israelites got there. No, it wasn't. Many people even have said, well, there's parts, and they've done this, they've, they've looked, there's parts of the Red Sea that are very shallow. And, and they could have crossed right here, and, and everything would have been fine. Oh, no, no, no. There's, there's, there's eastern and western winds that blow all the time in, in, in the Middle East. And, and it could have even have made the, the waters flow backwards for a little bit and, and naturally made a, made a low impression for the Israelites to cross the sea. I got a good Greek word for that. Baloney. Baloney. All right? It wasn't some feat of nature. It wasn't some luck or fortune that come their way. It was the hand of the Lord. It was the hand of the Lord. And I like what he says in verse number 13. Verse number 13, he says, The enemy that you see today, you'll not see again. Matter of fact, he uses the words, you'll never see again. In verse 14, he tells them to hold your peace. The literal word there means stand still. That's where I get the title of my message. Be still and move. God is telling them, move. Move. But be still and know that I am God. In other words, put your heart in my hand, God is saying, and take your physical body and move on. That's right. Put your heart in God's hands and take your physical body and do what I say. I like verse 15. Verse 15, and we know Moses. Moses was a crier. Moses was a, I, I sense Moses to be a screamer. Moses was one of those guys that got along with God in his closet. And I think it's okay to get along with God in your closet. And I even think it's okay to, to talk back to God. I even think it's okay to not back talk God. Please don't do that. I don't want to see what would happen. But it's okay to talk back to God. I remember my Aunt Brenda. God loved her. She would cry out in agony. And I would sense her body hurting over salvation over somebody losing a child, over a car crash. She would cry out to God, Why, God, why? I think that's okay. 
And that's what I think Moses was. I think Moses was one of those people. And, but remember, when we cry out to God like that, we better be ready for verse 15. God said, why are you crying out to me? Oh, oh, well, that's what I do every day. Why are you crying out to me? Get up and move. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now. Get up and move. Don't stand still anymore. Tell your people to move forward. Tell your people to move on. You see, God has a plan. And God told Moses that plan. What happens when God reveals that plan to us? What happens when God reveals that plan to us? <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll vote for us. We mess it up. Here, God revealed to Moses everything that God was going to do. God had told Moses about the ten plagues. Everything had happened. God had told him everything that God said was going to happen, happened, both good and bad. And yet, one last time, Moses like, are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, doggone it, church, God is sure. Has God done something good in your life? Well, two of you only has. Has God done something good in your life? Then doggone it, let's act like it. Let's act like it. If he done it once, he's going to do it again. Okay, he's done it a hundred times. Well, he's going to do it a hundred and one times. When God has a plan, when God tells us something, we're faced with two choices. Y'all like choices? We live in America. We've got a choice. We can vote left, right, or right down the middle. We got all kinds of choices. I can go to work, I can stay at home, or, or I can go to school, I can stay at home. But every choice you have has a consequence, both good and bad. I'll pick on her because she's sitting in front of me. Briley asked me this morning, she says, if I, go to, if I go down this career path, when can I retire? I said, you can retire when you work hard enough and have enough money in the bank to live independently. Well, how long is that going to take? I don't know. Figure it out. Every consequence, both good or bad, every choice we make has a plan, has a choice, excuse me, has a consequence, good and bad. God has a plan and we have two choices. You know what these two choices are? Follow or don't. <laughs> there ain't no other more. Follow or don't. The Lord revealed it to Moses. And what should Moses do? What should Moses do? Keep sitting there in the desert crying out to God. Keep facing the Red Sea, looking back at the enemy and just crying out for God. God, when are you going to help me? God, when are you going to help me? God said, I've been helping you, you fool. Get up and move. And by the way, tell your people to get up and move with him. But instead, many of us, we're in Team Israel. You go, Moses. You tell them, Moses. You show them, Moses. Moses, you, 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 you stand right there, Moses, and I'm going to reveal, and I'm going to tell all my kids, Moses, what a good servant you were. I'm, Moses, I'm going to tell all the people that what a perfect example you were. I'm going to brag on you, Moses. I'm going to tell my family about you, Moses. We'll make a little Facebook post, Team Moses. What's the word? Hashtag. Hashtag Team Moses. Yeah, you go, Moses. But when faced with a similar situation, what will we do? What will we do when faced with a similar situation? I think for Moses to record this in his book in Exodus in chapter 12, I think it was a pretty good majority of the people that said, let's just leave and go back to Egypt and we'll call this thing quits right now. And again, Moses had a chance. Moses had a chance. Moses had a chance. And Moses did what he was asked. To do. Moses led the people. Moses moved on. Moses didn't cower down. God revealed his plan to Moses, and Moses says, You can go back if you want to. That's fine. I'm not. My family and I are moving on. Get to verse 19, and the angel of the Lord moved. Oh no. When you ever read this story for the first time, you're like, Oh no, the angel of the Lord moved. Wait a minute. The angel of the Lord was in front of them, right? Preparing and leading the way, and they probably didn't. Well, I guess at this point, they probably figured it out. 
The angel in front of them was leading and preparing the way. The angel of the Lord led from in front of them and went behind them. Oh no. Well, the angel of the Lord has a bigger plan than you and I. The angel of the Lord was really encompassing them. I'm sure they walked in close relationship and I'm sure that they even sensed, uh oh, there's been a shift here, what do we do? Well, they had the red sea in front of them. They were protected from front. So the angel of the Lord said, I better go back behind them here. The angel of the Lord goes back behind them. And of course, you know the, you know the story. They, the, it becomes dark back where the Egyptians were. A cloud of darkness. And we don't like to think of the angel of the Lord providing a cloud of darkness, but it was not a cloud of evilness. It was a cloud of darkness to confuse the Egyptians. While even a cloud of light for the Israelites. In other words, God was giving them what they needed. Does that sound familiar? How many's got everything they want? Anybody got everything they want? Everybody got everything you want? You got everything you want? You got everything you want? Your mom and dad don't, so I don't expect you would either. You got everything you want? You got everything you want, visitor? But we got everything we need, don't we? We got everything we need, don't we? Because we got Jesus and we got salvation and we got the protection of the Lord. Our problem is that we don't listen. Oh, we hear it. Oh, we know it. Oh, we can quote it back. Oh, we know what it says. But we don't listen. We don't listen the whole time. God was protecting them. I get a visual here. This is, this is Brockanism 101. This is Brock's theory of what happened that day. I got a, the vision of the, the angel of the Lord left to go behind them. And I sense they sense that. I sense, can you not sense there's a shift sometimes? So there was a sense. But it's what really had happened was the angel of the Lord had a full circle around them. Had a full circle around them. And folks, I'm a firm believer in this. What he did for those Israelites that night, he is doing and will do for us as individuals and us as a church and us as the kingdom of church, as the king, us as the church of Jesus Christ, the kingdom church, which is the universal church, which is the most important church, Jesus Christ. And I love Deep Springs. I love being your pastor. So, But the universal church, the big picture church, is what God wants for us we got to be still and move on we got to put our heart in his hand and move on verse 22 the Israelites oh oh verse 20 verse 21 excuse me I skipped over a verse I've seen I hope in heaven there's a DVD I do I hope I hope there's a DVD player in heaven yeah bear with me for a second because I've seen Charleston Heston part the Red Sea Hollywood gets a lot of things wrong okay Boy, they got that one right. Was that not powerful when he laid that down and that Red Sea parted up? And folks, I believe it happened just like that. But I hope that there's a DVD when I get to heaven and there's a recorder somewhere, there's a library or something because there's a, there's a few other things I want to see that happen in the Bible that I, I just I kind of sound like Thomas. I just want to see it happen. But I, I hope that there's a DVD and a big flat screen TV that I can see Moses lay it down and part that Red Sea. Because it was something special. It was something special. And unlike the other theories that I mentioned before at the first of the message, had it not been, had it been an act of nature, the ground still would have been wet. Now you don't believe me, about January, I ain't going with you. I'll probably laugh at you when you call me. But get your car and drive down to that little lake bottom. It looks dry. Just go ahead and do it. Call me. I know a friend that owns a towing company. He'll be laughing at you too. He needs a business. But the miracle was that the Israelites crossed on dry ground. A million people treading across is going to create a divot and wear stuff out anyway. But you see, folks, God was with the church that day. God was with the Israelites. God was with His people. And God showed up and God showed out. Remember what God said in verse number 4. I saw, I, they had one more verse posted up and I told them to. They did right. God told me to stop reading right there because 
I'm recalled of verse number 4 and verse number 17. What did he say? He said, I will harden Pharaoh's heart in verse number 4. In verse number 17, he said, I will harden the Egyptians' hearts. So there's a lot of hard hearts are going on around here. There's a lot of happy hearts in the Israelites and a lot of hard hearts from the Egyptians and Pharaoh. I think I can pause right here just for a second. Which one are you? Which one are you? Are you an Israelite? With a happy, joyful heart? Or are you a Pharaoh Egyptian with a hardened heart? Let me ask you this. Forget the Israelites and the Egyptians. And just for a brief moment, forget being a Christian. Do you have a hard heart this morning? Do you have a hard heart this morning? God hardened the hearts of of the people knowing what I know about the Egyptians was pretty cool the Egyptians saw the Israelites trekking through that divided water water on the the left water on the right dry ground the Israelites are just boiling through they're probably singing some beautiful song and they're having a joyous time they're worshiping they're praising and the Egyptians and all their pride and all their arrogance says all right boys we got this so they begin to trek and they begin to push right on through they get about middle ways I don't say it in there, but they get about middle ways. And God not only hardened their hearts, what's it say He did in those next few verses? He hardened their brakes. He locked up their wheels, if you will. He locked up, remember what He said? I'll make their chariots even know that I am the Lord thy God. Locked up their chariots. So the people at that point, those unchristian, those unruly Egyptians said, let's leave. Obviously, the Lord is on their side. They became believers in just a matter of a second. Problem was, it was a little too late to be a believer. And God said, what? What was the promise that God made to Moses? I will let them know. I will reveal to them that I am the Lord their God. I'm going to reveal it to them. So guess what had happened? The water began to come back in. They began to leave and they began to flee. Let's just go back to Egypt. Let's just go back. And God says, no, I've not revealed my plan to you enough. And the whole, I think it's verse 25, read on there, you can read on a little bit. The whole army had been wiped out. All of Pharaoh's army had been wiped out. No one survived. And I'm sure there was a lot of crying out to the Lord. But it was too late. It was too late. They had already sealed their fate. It was just a little bit too late. It was a little bit too late. It goes back to say everybody that enters the name, everybody that hollers the name Lord, Lord, shall not enter the kingdom of God. That day those Israel, Egyptians said, obviously the Lord is with them. Let's turn and go back. But it was just a little bit too late. The whole army was devastated. The whole army was wiped out. No one survived. What about it, church? Will we stand still and move? Now, preacher, I don't understand what stand still and move is. I did a terrible job of explaining it, but let me explain it one more time and we can talk more if we need to. We can do this a couple of ways. We can just stick our hand out and let God grab it and lead us as we go. I did that about four and a half years ago and the Lord's been blessing me ever since. There's another way that we can do this and I support that method. There's another way that we can do this. We can just take our heart and give it to God and say God here's my heart now what do you want me to do God said follow it follow me and I'll follow your heart whatever's the best approach for you it doesn't matter in both of those ways it's just it's just what I'm telling us it's just what just what God revealed to me it doesn't matter how we do it the end result is are we going to surrender to the Lordship of the one true mighty God? 
through the power and through the blood of Jesus Christ. Are we going to surrender the Lordship to God? Or are we going to stay camped up in Pharaoh's camp? Are we going to stay camped up in Pharaoh's camp? Or are we going to move forward into the hands of God? As we come to the time of decision, the time is yours. Some of y'all have expressed it's a desire to join Deep Springs Baptist Church. I'd like nothing better than for you to join Deep Springs Church. But I'd also like nothing better for you to be in right relationship with God. Where are you at this morning? Is your heart heart hard? Is your heart hardened? Is your life good? Are you right where you need to be? And as your pastor, some of you all are. I ain't not every. Some of this message wasn't for some of you all. Some of us are are, are right where God wants us to be. As your pastor, well, I'm going to tell you: be careful, be ready. Okay, be ready. Something might happen. I'm not saying it will, but I, I'm just saying trials and tribulations. We rest not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the evilness of this world. So. If you're right where God would need you to be, are you prayed up? Either way, the altar is open. Is your heart open to accept what God is revealing to you? Is your heart open? Are you willing to accept what God has in store for you? Let's be like the Israelites after verse number 12. They got up. And they moved on in the presence of the Lord. What about it, church? The time of invitation is for you and God. Will you be still and move? Let's stand. Turn to page 137. 137. Trust in Jesus.
just to take him at his cleansing word, beneath his healing. Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior today? Do you know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? We heard a story in Sunday school this morning. It's never too late. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? If you do, what are you doing about it? Hmm? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? We as a church, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Let's serve on, church. Serve on. Thank you. Uh, how can I pray for you this week? I know the...